Assalamu alaikum. As a single unit, Surah Al Humaza, the Quran's chapter 104, condemns and uh, states a dire threat against people who pile up wealth relentlessly in full dedication to the earthly life, forgetting about the afterlife, and exulting over what they have while arrogantly slighting and slandering others with gestures and words. The Surah promises such transgressors severest punishment and hellfire, burning them through and through in ways of torture that we cannot comprehend. Woe to every unrelenting backbiter, slanderer, sneerer, who amasses wealth and keeps on counting it, thinking that his wealth has won him immortality. But no, indeed, he shall certainly be tossed away into the unsparing crusher and shall be discarded therein. Yet how should you know what the unsparing crusher is? Allah's fire that is set blazing, which keeps watch on hearts, surmounts hearts, grabs hold of them and reaches the very core of them. Indeed, that fire is firmly locked with them enclosed within it amid pillars that are laid outstretched. <coughs> More commentary than usual is required when analyzing the denotative sub-basic layer of this particular surah's translation. <coughs> to start with, the surah condemns every humaza, that is a backbiter and a slanderer of others behind their backs, humaza, who is also a lumaza that is, a sneerer at others in the face, whether with words, facial expressions or gestures. My translation of these two descriptive nouns, homaza and lumaza, has them preceded by the adjective unrelenting, because both words are in an intensive noun form. Intensive noun form, we say, ala wazni fu'ala. Uh, derived from the base words hams and lamas successively. So they are humaza and lumaza. By an intensive noun form, we mean that uh, the, the noun uh, construction is expressive of a stark and lasting attribute of the noun. <coughs> Moreover, this evil person who is humaza and lumaza is described as a worshipper of wealth. For he does not only gather money and amass it, but uh, he also keeps on counting it. You see, the verb addada, الذي جمع مالا وعدده. The verb addada is an intensified form of the verb adda. Adda, addada which means to count. So the construction of the verb itself tells you of a repeated action, sort of non-stop uh, uh, action. Uh, following the condemnation of this type of vicious person, there instantly comes the sudden word kalla, which functions as harfu rad'in, as we say, uh, that expresses uh, uh, negation or forbiddance. It's an article that expresses negation and forbiddance, while bearing the meaning of haqqan, in truth, which uh, provides emphasis to the context. Hence, it is translated as, but no, indeed. Thus, while the word kalla 
strongly uh, condemns the case that precedes it, where this evil person is described, it simultaneously stresses the succeeding result of that condemnation, that condemned uh, case, the result that is kalla la yumbadanna. The word la yumbadanna is the passive voice of the verb yambudu. Yambudu is to dump somewhere and to abandon. Dump and abandon. Thus, uh, the evil person that the surah berates is going to be tossed away and discarded. But in Arabic, to say that somebody will be tossed away and discarded, uh, we normally say, by using this verb, we say, سَوْفَ يُنْبَذُ Then why does the ayah say, لَا يُنْبَذَنَّ instead of سَوْفَ يُنْبَذُ which is the normal way of, of expressing uh, this verb. That's because uh, the construction of the verb here, layum badanna, is not in plain futurity. Layum badanna, rather, clearly bears the, the, the prefix la, uh, which is attached to the beginning of the base verb. Yumbedu, le yumbedu, and the suffix n attached to the end of this base verb. Instead of sofa yumbedu, we have le yumbedan. And both of these additions, le and n, are used to give emphasis. The le prefix that is that in Arabic uh, grammar is called lamun muwatti'atul lil qasam, explicitly implies an oath and the and the emphatic n that uh, the, the, the suffix is called nonu tawkid uh, which is uh, used for emphasis this is why the phrase in my translation appears as he shall certainly be tossed away and shall be discarded uh, in an attempt to to convey the, 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 the emphasis, uh, the, the double emphasis in the, in the, uh, in the word, <coughs> uh, with the conjunction between the two meanings typed in orange color to signify parallel denotation. So, he shall certainly be tossed away and shall be discarded. The orange marker of parallel denotation uh, is clearly there. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. And next, Hellfire comes named by one of its frightening attributes, the hutama, that is the crusher, which I translate as the unsparing crusher, because of the intensive noun form of the word hutama, derived from the word hatima, as we've just explained with regard to the similar derivation of the words homaza and lumaza. Here we have Hutama. So it's not just it's not just any crusher, it's an unsparing crusher. In this same sentence, the word therein, written in thin black italics, uh, within the phrase uh, and shall be discarded therein, is an adverbial substitution used instead of saying in that unsparing crusher. <coughs> Next as indicated by the orange markers of parallel denotation that appear within the text, uh, books of Quranic tafsir or exegesis uh, tell us that the verb tattali'u uh, ala, tattali'u ala, the fire, that tattali'u ala al-af'ida, which is a tribute to the flames of hellfire. Um, I said uh, uh, books of, uh, of of Quranic tafsir in Arabic uh, tell us that this uh, verb uh, um, with regard to the fire uh, bears multiple denotations. Uh, it keeps watch on or observes, it surmounts, rises above, it grabs hold of with speed especially, and it reaches and fully dominates. All these verbs, all these meanings are there within the verb 
تطلع على الأفئدة <coughs> uh, which, is, which are all brought side by side with the orange markers in between. And a final remark to make is that for the exegetic purpose of inducing clarity of reference and, and preserving stylistic flow, the latter part of this surah shows cases of, of nouns substituted by pronouns and vice versa appearing typed in thin black italics within the text. The surah begins with the word wailun, which casts destruction and misery upon someone. And since that is cast by Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is of maximum seriousness. Therefore, it's not only woe to so-and-so, it's ravaging woe and painful, humiliating torment to every unrelenting backbiter, slanderer, sneerer. Forever doomed is he who amasses wealth greedily and keeps on counting it feverishly over and over again, exultantly thinking that his wealth has won him immortality. But no, indeed, he shall certainly be tossed away like worthless waste into the unsparing crusher and shall be discarded therein. Subsequent to uh, the mention of this uh, unsparing crusher uh, comes a, a, a rhetorical question that uh, serves the purpose of aggrandizement, what we call a tahwil. Uh, a rhetorical question which says, yet how should you know, O Hira, what the unsparing crusher is? And meaning, and what its horribleness is like when it is far beyond anything that you could ever imagine. This is what it means. And this is a very common question in the Quran. How would you know about this? How would you know anything about this when it is beyond anything you can imagine? And there instantly follows the clarification of what this unsparing crusher is. It is Almighty Allah's immense fire. I say immense because it's attributed to the Almighty Lord, as everything that is attributed to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is lent a halo of, of grandeur. So it is Almighty Allah's immense fire that is set incessantly and forever blazing, incessantly and forever blazing. Muqada, you see, is a, is a nominal participle. Nominal participle, we call it in Arabic ism maf'ul. Nominal means that it is uh, a derivation that serves as a noun, and the noun uh, expresses fixedness and stability as, as compared to verbs, uh, the verb of which would mean, would say التي توقد instead of الموقد a verb would express change and fluidity but here it is نار الله الموقد so it is fixedness and stability and therefore it is set incessantly and forever blazing التي تطالع على الأفئدة as we have just said which keeps close watch on hearts surmounts those hearts with full force, grabs hold of them and reaches the very core of each of them with its flames. Indeed, that fire is firmly locked with them enclosed within it amid huge pillars that are laid outstretched.
ravaging woe and painful, humiliating torment every unrelenting backbiter, slanderer, sneerer. Forever doomed is he who, being so full of insolent selfishness, amasses wealth greedily from whatever source and by whatever means and keeps on counting it feverishly over and over again without ever caring to give the needy their share in Allah's bestowal. And he thus continues exultantly to accumulate worldly advantages, unwisely thinking that his wealth has won him blissful immortality in the earthly life and has won him safety from harm and adversity and guaranteed him escape from questioning and judgment. But no, indeed, the matter is not at all as this loser wishes and plans, for he has no protection whatsoever against Allah's will and his punishment, and he is certainly dying soon enough and is to be questioned in detail and judged justly by his Lord, creator, nurturer, sovereign owner and subjugator. And then in requital for all his meanness and depravity, he shall certainly be tossed away like worthless waste into the unsparing crusher of all that is thrown into it and shall be discarded therein to burn and suffer for all eternity. Yet how should you know, O hearer, what the unsparing crusher is and what its horribleness is like without being divinely enlightened about it when it is far beyond anything that you or anyone else could ever imagine? It is Almighty Allah's immense fire that by his command is set incessantly and forever blazing for his defiers. That is the matchless fire fueled by human bodies and molten rock which burns Allah's defiers all over within and without. In truth, it keeps close watch on its dwellers' hearts. Such hearts that through the abuse of their of their capacity and disposition for emotional awareness, intuitive cognizance and faith long chose false beliefs, for base desires and vain wishes, surmounts those hearts with full force, grabs hold of them and then fitly reaches the very core of each of them with its merciless flames. Indeed, those losers have no hope of dying, of taking any kind of rest, of getting any physical or spiritual relief, or of finding any escape from hell. For that most horrific fire is firmly locked with them enclosed within it in utmost humiliation, anguish, pain and despair, confined amid huge pillars that are laid outstretched in every direction with which they're tortured in ways that no one but Allah knows and to which their chains and shackles are tied. Mm -hmm.